Shinkinchi Shimabuku, otherwise known as Tatsua Shimabuku, was born in 1908 in Okinawa. He later would adopt the name Tatsuo because it means Dragon Man, reflecting his fierce fighting spirit and his dedication to karate. In the family tree, you can see here where Tatsuo learned Shonru from Chotoku Chin, Gojuru from Chojin Miyagi. He also studied some uh, Okinawan Kimpo from Motobu, and then he would learn his weapons training, bow and sai in particular, from Shikin. Here you can see the family tree after Tatsuo as well. And I will highlight a few of these people later. I don't have the cover anymore, but this is the manual one received when they became a member of the Ishiru Karate School in Spokane, Washington, uh, when I was in high school there. It was at the Salvation Army, and we paid $10 a year. So it was almost part of their ministry. Jerry Williams, who studied under Steve Armstrong, was the head sensei. He was a third-degree black belt at the time. And uh, the drawing is of him. You see, it's all beat up, but I've kept it. And uh, this introduction has his signature on it. And so it, it basically has the syllabus for each belt rank. And when did I start taking Ishiru? Well, I don't know the exact date by memory, but I could make it sound like I remembered and I'm a genius, but I'm not. But when you got the manual that very first day, your name was written on it and so was the date. Uh, and so that is how I know that I had started there on the uh, 10th of June, uh, 1980. Uh, what is interesting enough about that is that a couple weeks later, I would actually go to California for a couple months and then come back and re-engage uh, with the studies there. But it has the black belt requirements here for Ishinru. Uh, I had the table of contents. And it was a nice little book at the time to go through Ishinru Karate Do. It, also, what was very interesting is that we met on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. There was some Taekwondo on Monday and Wednesday nights. And then in the basement of the Salvation Army uh, was the Golden Glove Boxing Training. And they met Tuesdays and Thursday nights. Uh, so that particular uh, Salvation Army had a lot going on. As a child, I would attend Camp Gifford three times. Uh, that was run by that Salvation Army. And as an adult, when I was going to college, I spent three summers as a camp counselor for the Salvation Army. So the Salvation Army there was real pivotal uh, in my life for many reasons. Uh, and uh, I still have really fond memories of it to this very day. Now the Ishinru emblem is of the water goddess Mizugami of Okinawan mythology. Uh, and she is like half woman and half dragon. And she bears her young at the bottom of the sea and then ascends to the heavens as a young sea serpent. And this is depicted here uh, in the patch. It is to combine the qualities of protective, calm, and gentle mother with the fierceness and strength of a sea goddess. The emblem in her left hand is held open in a sign of peace and the gentle tranquility of a mother. Her right hand is held in a fist as a sign of her strength, just as she represents the gentle mother and the water goddess, she displays great power and strength as reinforced by the gray in the background, which represents the great force of nature in a typhoon. If Ishinru is known for anything, it's for the vertical fist in karate. While you do find the vertical fist in some Kung Fu styles, it was rare to find it in any of the karate styles. And still to this day, it's rare. Most karate systems have the corkscrew punch, or we call it the reverse punch, where the punch corkscrews. In Ishinru, he holds the thumb at this three point, as you can see in the picture, and that is to stabilize the wrist, and the punch comes out vertically. Uh, it's a quite innovative idea, and uh, if you notice, uh, when it comes and it's punching, if you're punching a bag or a board, it does strengthen that wrist 
for it doesn't bend as much. Well, how did I encounter Isra Karate? Well, I was actually, I was taking Tung Sado under Les Dunwoody. He taught in the Spokane Valley and uh, taught both at the Lions Club and at an elementary school out there. And it was on Mondays and Wednesdays. And one night we had the Goju, American Goju guys come to the dojo. And I'll recall it because it was in Tung Sado Dojane. And we also had the Isra uh, uh, class come. Uh, and Jerry and the Goju instructor was there for the Goju class. Uh, and they came and they brought their students and it was a night of just exchanging of ideas and uh, a little bit of light sparring uh, and, and uh, getting to know people of other systems. And I've actually kind of kept that open when I've taught. I've loved to get together with other instructors and bring them in. Well, I liked what I had saw and they taught Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I thought, well, heck, I can get karate in four days a week this way. Uh, so I would end up starting uh, about a month later at the Salvation Army uh, taking Ishinu Karate. Ishinu was kind of a natural way to be introduced to Okinawan Karate for me because like in Tunsudo, the stances are generally up. Instead of these low, deep stances that you find in Japanese Karate, uh, the Okinawans preferred, uh, because of practicality, to not be so low and deep. Out of them, Ishinu was even more so. Uh, the practicality of being lighter on your feet. And so you can see in the katas that you've seen, there's most, they're almost completely upright. And in the Japanese karate systems, except for really Kyokushin, uh, you see a lot more deep stances. I know in Goju and Okinawa, uh, they're not quite as deep as they are in Japan. But Ishimu was really about uh, being lighter on your feet and uh, being uh, with a quicker reaction time and less deep stances. And so you see that when you look at a lot of the Ishiru uh, martial artists and what they're doing. You can see here, uh, this is Steve Armstrong, who was Jerry Williams' instructor, and Steve Armstrong was actually mentioned in the 1980 official karate magazine as the second most important person in uh, martial arts for America uh, at the time in their annual that year. But you see, he's not low in his stance, unlike he was when he was refereeing uh, in the picture between Chuck Norris and Joe Lewis. But even on the kata, it's almost uh, like the Korean martial arts of the time. Uh, and then it trains you to be lighter in your feet. Also, that vertical punch, which is well-known in Kung Fu, was also advocated by Bruce Lee. I'd just like to throw that uh, in there as well. Next, we have Tatsuo's son, of whom he left the legacy for, Another famous uh, Ishiru Karate practitioner was Howard Long, who taught, if I remember correctly, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, if That's what I was told, and I think I looked it up, and that's what it said uh, as well. He was known, even though I was on the West Coast, he was also talked about uh, as a great Ishiru Karate practitioner at the time. The next person uh, I want to mention is Joseph Jennings. The first time I encountered Joseph Jennings was actually again in an official karate magazine. He was really well known on the East Coast, at least according to that magazine. And he had demonstrated some techniques for the, uh, the magazine. And I was like, oh, wow, those are great. I would end up buying his book, Winning Karate, which I think came a couple years after I read that uh, magazine. He would go on to uh, be the CEO of Panther Productions, which in the uh, early to mid-late 90s, made all these fantastic videos. Uh, what, some of them were instructional videos, others were recording of fights. Uh, and I had bought like the entire set of the Bill Wallace instructional videos, as well as some of other people in Goju. Uh, they had a Gene LaBelle one I purchased as well. Uh, and then he did interviews with Mike Stone and Bill Wallace and a lot of other martial artists. So it was just a terrific, terrific uh, uh, lineup and you can find many of his videos that he produced on YouTube to this very day. The Code of Ishinru. A person's heart is the same as heaven and earth. The blood circulating is similar to the moon and sun. The manner of drinking and spitting is either hard or soft. A person's unbalance is the same as weight. The body should be able to change directions at any time. The time to strike is when opportunity presents itself. The eye must see all sides. The ear must listen in all directions.